Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, the hypothesis of catastrophic man-made global warming is dead, and it needs to be buried. Evidence has been mounting for years that there were problems with global warming models. Most telling was that the Earth refused to warm up as human carbon dioxide emissions continued. This is why true believers abandoned the global warming brand name in favor of the more ambiguous climate change, which is something the rest of us call weather. The dam broke with ClimateGate when hacked emails from the University of East Anglia's Climate Research Unit revealed that global warming advocates had for years hidden conflicting data and attempted to discredit critics. British authorities have determined that the university broke freedom of information laws by refusing to release information to other scientists seeking to replicate their work. Evidence is emerging that the data was rigged all along. Russian analysts noted that British temperature calculations excluded data from 40% of Russian territory, much of which showed no increase in temperature in the last 50 years. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration also cherry-picked data, cutting Canadian data sources from 600 to 35 and relying on only one monitor for all of the Canadian Arctic, where there are 100 monitors available. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is having its own scandal regarding a finding in its Nobel Peace Prize winning 2007 report that glaciers in the Himalayas are rapidly disappearing. It is now revealed that this dramatic claim was based not on years of careful research, but on anecdotes from a hiking magazine and a student's thesis. IPCC Chairman Rajendra Pachuri knew about the erroneous information before December's Copenhagen Climate Summit, but remained silent. Until now, anyone who questioned the credibility of the IPCC was labeled as a climate skeptic or worse. But many climate scientists sense a sinking ship and they're bailing out. Among them is Andrew Weaver, a climatologist at the University of Victoria, who acknowledges that the climate body has crossed the line into advocacy. Even Greenpeace has called for Mr. Pachuri's resignation. Scientists mu must come to grips with some highly inconvenient truths. Among them, average world temperatures refuse to rise as carbon emissions continue. Scotland is facing its coldest winter in a century. Arctic sea ice is near normal. Antic, uh, Antarctic sea ice is exactly normal. Polar bears are experiencing a baby boom. Water vapor plays a far greater role in our climate than does carbon dioxide, and solar activity is hugely important to our climate. Meanwhile, climate alarmists seek to blame capitalism and productivity for global warming, global cooling, too much snow, too little snow, hurricanes, tornadoes, and even the Haitian earthquake. The simplistic and discredited hypothesis of man-made global warming needs to be discarded. Scientists who obtain government grants by using scare tactics and by squelching skeptics must be disciplined.